This is the swimming pool here at Boswell School. Um, it's a fantastic facility which we offer to all of our students. The downside, or the opposite side, from my look at it, from a business manager's perspective, is it is an absolute cost. Keeping the pool heated to 24 degrees centigrade, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, costs in the region of 15 to 20,000 pounds. An absolute, an absolute fortune. And the heat loss through the roof, because it's is equivalent to 18 one bar electric fires burning all day, every day. When we replace the roof later this summer, that will be reduced to only four bars of electric fires burning 24 seven. As business manager of the Boswell School in Chelmsford, Bruce Doy hopes to save up to £2,000 each year in heating bills by building a new roof over the swimming pool. And since he's been at the school, he has focused his attention on a range of larger building projects around the site. Well, my background is 30 years, and I dare not say this too much in public, in banking. Um, I can still walk down the street without actually, actually being attacked by people. Um, but I, but, but uh, it's, more than just, it's more than just banking. It's, the, it's, it's 30 years of commercial knowledge uh, and experience and you can bring all those particular skills and, and very unusual bits and pieces to to schools to actually help them save money. Bruce brought many of his talents to the table, in particular his ability to cut down building costs by making use of the many assets that the school already had on site. Well, in recent years we've been able to do a number of things that we thought perhaps may have been beyond us. This is an early 60s build school set up for 400 students, it's, it's expanded over the years to provide for 1600 but we were left with still a very small school hall and as a performing arts school quite frankly we felt that it didn't provide a, an appropriate venue for our students. So we looked very carefully at funding and within our own means we were able to transform the school hall into a theatre properly equipped with a much larger stage with proper acoustic provision and uh, a high quality AV system. In the theatre, the, 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 fir the first year um, we, handed the, we handed the hall over to the contractors. Uh, we then said to our premises team, you have the skills, you have carpentry skills, you have painting skills, you have a whole range of, of fantastic uh, building skills. Let's sit down and work out how, what, what you can do, when you can do it, to really make it uh, a proper professional theatre. Can you remember what we did? With the sails, we done all the sails up there. They were quite a, quite a big challenge actually yep. to get the, the right yep. shapes, weren't they? Yeah, oh, yes. sails, the frames was sand boards, all the ducting went, went along. And of course the ceiling needed quite a lot of work and all, didn't it? That was in a quite bad state of repair. And that, because that was, that, well that was pine, that, that was pine, pine that was pine, that, everything was pine, wasn't it? It was very 60s, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. How could you do it without counting in? Who's leading? You're just going to start. Oh, okay, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we're like boiler room in Canada. You know, we spent 400,000 on converting this hall to a theatre. Really? You know, do you know how much I reckon your work saved us? No, I haven't got a clue. I reckon it's close to 100,000. Now, without that, we, without your work, we wouldn't have done this. Using the maintenance team wasn't the only way he could make savings in the theatre. By taking out leases on the AV system and the tiered seating, Bruce managed to bring down his overall costs by some £120,000 in total. One of the challenges of, of being a business manager, it's a very lonely role. Um, yes, I am a member of, the, member of the leadership team, but from time to time there are challenges and questions and issues that are posed, and I'm going, hmm, that's an interesting question. Who do I go and ask? I've actually made a few phone calls a little while ago, a few a couple of years or so ago, now it must be, um, to other schools in the local area saying, you don't know me, I don't know you. People keep asking me questions, and I don't know who to go and ask for answers. Is it possible we could get together and just sort of talk about things that are happening in your school? I can talk about things that are happening in my school. Yeah. I did like them on our Google groups where, um, I can't remember what school it was, who had the order form that said, if 80% of mm, your budget yes. is not spent by Christmas, it's clawed back and redistributed. Yeah, lovely. I liked that, yes, a, lot. I like that a lot. The ideas and the suggestions which you bounce around in that room are absolutely fantastic. And you come back infused with ideas, oh, X school are doing that, Y school are doing that. And then you take that idea, and then because most of the work has been done on it, all you need to do is a little bit of fine tweaking. Bringing ourselves out of deficit years just before we're going to go into a stage where it's going to be tight economically, we've already done that planning and making those efficiency savings. Hopefully that set us up actually to, to carry that in good stead. I feel like in a really good place.
Well, thankfully, those skills will be available through the Google group for the rest of us to tap into <laughs> if we go, go to go that particular route. The big win is that you can sit down with like-minded people and talk through the issues that are affecting them and you. The, ma the main essence is, is, is the swapping of ideas, uh, which is absolutely, utterly brilliant. It's invaluable. I don't, I don't think I could do my job without it. Mm -hmm.